Thank you very much for inviting me to the opening of the Scruton Café in Budapest. The idea is inspired as it will keep conversation around Roger's ideas and writing part of daily life in Central Europe. This is a beautiful tribute to him. Only this time last year, Roger engaged in the events to commemorate the 30th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall and the end of communism in Central Europe. Although he was very ill, he gave a brilliant talk in London on, on the significance of the philosopher and activist Jan Patochka. And then he managed one last trip to Prague. This was followed by being honoured by Hungary in a ceremony at the Hungarian Embassy in London, where Prime Minister Viktor Orban awarded him with the Commander's Cross with the Star of the Order of Merit of Hungary a huge honour, and gave an extremely thoughtful speech that meant so much to Roger and which our family treasures. Roger enjoyed so many friendships in Hungary and across Central Europe. It is wonderful that you are opening the place Scruton, where more friendships will grow and an intellectual community can feel at home. To that end, I thought you might enjoy having some of Roger's furniture, I hope you enjoy having the desk that he wrote at when he was in London and which bears the marks of many cups of strong tea that he drank from it while working. You also have some books, pictures, music and even some horse saddlery to help you enjoy a life well lived. Thank you for the respect and high regard you hold Roger in and I hope you enjoy the events to come. Good evening and welcome to this panel discussion in the memory of the British philosopher Roger Scruton. The event is organized by the Scruton Community Place in Budapest in cooperation with Matthias Corvinus Collegium. I welcome the participants to this uh, discussion. Douglas Murray, uh, writer, author of numerous books and currently fellow at the Danube Institute in Budapest. We have the director of the Danube Institute, John O'Sullivan. And we have Ferenc Sörcher, a research professor at the University uh, for Public Administration in Budapest. Well, welcome, gentlemen. Let's begin with you, Douglas. Uh, you've known uh, Roger Scruton for a long time. And in a dis discussion with you, I think um, maybe a year ago, he said that a good deal of his life um, had been consumed by a somewhat futile attempt to define conservatism. But when I see the praise heaped on him by pretty much anybody who is anyone in the conservative world, it can't have been all that futile. Yes, that's, that's right. I think, by the way, I think John knew Roger for longer than I did. I, I knew Roger for, I think, about 20 years. Um, uh, and it was a great honor to have known him, to be friends with him, and uh, to have had so much encouragement and inspiration from him. Um, Yes, I, I think that might have been a certain element of, of characteristic self-deprecation. Uh, on the other hand, I can see why he felt it was true. He did think that there was something very in, inbuilt that was difficult about defining conservatism in philosophical terms, um, precisely among other things because of the necessity to not be in favour of dogma if you were a conservative. Um, and therefore um, to try to sort of reject rigid systems of thought and much more. There were lots of things that, that, that Roger reckoned went wrong when they ended up being wrapped up in, in uh, too much in the realm of ideas. I mean, one of his insights about English conservatism that was so important was his insight that, you know, it was exactly the suspicion of ideologies and the suspicion of people coming along with new theories and claims about things. It was precisely that that had, that had kept the country well. Um, so I think to some extent it was, it was, um, it was a sincerely meant thing. And, and as for his own uh, success in it, yes, I mean, um, I think there was a bit of self-deprecation in that. And you're quite right that the, um, the reputation that he rightly has in, I think, 
most, most countries uh, in which philosophy matters, uh, is a signal in a way, not just for his own prominence, but also it, it is a signal that conservatism has, has lacked for people in this space in recent generations. Uh, since Roger's death, a number of people have, have described him as the most important um, conservative philosopher since Burke, and I, th I think that's a, um, that's a claim that isn't overstated. Uh, but I think that, yes, in his time, there were relatively few other applicants for that role. Um, so perhaps that would have been one reason why, why he said it. Um, he, yes, he, he knew that it was a, a, a difficult task he'd assigned himself, but he, uh, he ended up triumphing at this self-appointed task. John, uh, do you think Roger Scruton uh, sought to have an impact on politics via his thinking? And if so, did he have an impact? Well, I, I don't think he sought to have a direct impact, except possibly when he was um, writing a column, a newspaper column, which he did for some years for the London Times. Um, where a columnist obviously writes about the issues of the day, um, even drawing on uh, a, a lot of other things. Um, but I do think that he did have an impact um, because there's a, an entire, the existence of this uh, little institution is an example of that. But there's also an organization called um, the um, Vandenberg Society, which uh, is, has in young, able conservative intellectuals and liberal intellectuals of a classical kind um, or from all, from every European country with sympathizers in America. How did that spring up? It sprang up because in his writings on serious matters, not uh, and things which the, the per writers on the permanent things, to use a, an expression of a, from Russell Kirk, the American conservative writer who was uh, someone whom uh, Roger liked and respected, um, th those writings made converse at a different level to that of the opinion poll. Um, and, and, and those people have, in a sense, formed, a, 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 well, not a school, um, uh, not, a, not, a, not any kind of or, uh, organized group, but they've formed a large audience of intelligent, sympathetic, critical minds, um, which is what he wanted above all. And I think his view on, on if you're a how does a conservative affect uh, his society would have been to say something like, well, don't write pamphlets about conservative ideas. Um, uh, don't try to get up a list of a conservative who has to believe the following six things. No. If you're a, a novelist, write a novel. If you're a screenwriter, write a screenplay. Uh, if you're a sculptor, sculpt something. If you're a musician, compose. Um, and if you are also a person of conservative disposition with a desire to preserve the best in your society, what you will actually produce are works of a conservative character and which may or may not, but probably will, have some sort of conservative impact uh, which ripples outwards. And that's ex from a small number of people to a larger audience to people who sometimes uh, respond by critically in a hostile way, but nonetheless are affected by your work. And I think that's what Roger himself did. Um, maybe not as consciously as I'm suggesting, but it was the way in which his impact worked on the world. He didn't, he wasn't a pamphleteer. He would have been pretty good at it, by the way, but he wasn't. And, um, but he was a philosopher and he's had the kind of influence, I think, that philosophers should have. Well, one way to have an impact on politics is, is to have an in impact on politicians' thinking. Uh, did uh, Margaret Thatcher, for instance, pay attention to what Roger Scruton thought and wrote? Well, Roger was one of uh, four people, I think. Jonathan Aitken, uh, a, a, a politician. Uh, John Casey, a, a fellow Don at Cambridge. And who was the fourth? Can't remember. Um, who founded the Conservative Philosophy Group in the 70s, which I was lucky enough to be invited to attend. And um, a, somebody, in one case, for example, it was Michael Oakeshott, the philosopher, who gave a, a very well-known paper now, uh, distinguishing between societies which are enterprise societies on the one hand, by which he meant dedicated to a particular goal, equality or whatever, um, and, and societies which are civil, uh, civil societies. And those societies are, uh, organize, uh, 
society is organized not to reach a common collective goal, but to allow everyone in the society to pursue their own individual goals as, as best they can without bumping too noisily into each other. And, um, and that was what that was, I remember that particular paper caused a tremendous uh, argument around the table. But so what, he, what they did was they, they, would have, they would have these monthly dinners, there'd be a learned paper, there would be a response to it, and that went on for some years. Mrs. Thatcher did attend it, so did another famous uh, English politician, Enoch Powell. He was a regular attender and a very fearsome one because <laughs> people were intellectually frightened of, of, of Enoch. <laughs> Socially a very pleasant man, but intellectually, you know, you, you didn't want to uh, find yourself at the end of his lacerating, uh, witty uh, <laughs> criticism. And uh, Mrs. Thatcher herself um, was very respectful of those there. You know, I I'm a tremendous fan of Mrs. Thatcher. She's one of the great figures of our history. But, I mean, there was also in her the permanent scholarship girl. And she loved sitting at the knees of, of great minds. And so that's, so therefore she would sometimes, maybe sometimes appear a little gauche on these occasions. But I thought, think that she had the courage to be gauche and I admired her for it. And so I think did Roger because his views on her changed over the years. We may come onto that a bit, but, but certainly his final, uh, uh, his final view of her was very, very high indeed. Mr. Hirscher, we, we, we are in Budapest. This is a Scruton community place, not in England, but in Hungary. Um, can it be said that Roger Scruton had an impact on political thought in Hungary? Well, not only can it be said, that's uh, just a, a very modest uh, proposal. What uh, should be said is that uh, he had an impact, I think, and, and therefore uh, there is a cult of Roger Scruton by now, I guess. Uh, why, you can ask? Uh, well, uh, the reason is that he had a very good knowledge of the place. Uh, uh, very uh, uh, experienced, uh, you know, uh, adventurer of uh, uh, this area, which was uh, in his youth uh, beyond uh, the Iron Curtain, you know, and that's uh, why it was uh, really a sort of courage to come here. Uh, he started it uh, in, in Prague and, and then went to Poland and to Hungary and uh, met young uh, people, mostly university students, but not only university students, people uh, of every rank and every uh, profession. Uh, and uh, these circles uh, united and he gave a talk, uh, discussed issues, brought uh, uh, his books or other books which were not allowed to be published uh, or read uh, at the university in those days. So uh, he had a, a real impact on the intellectual life before the fall of uh, the Berlin Wall. And that's why, why he, he was uh, really admired by that generation. I, I was uh, a university student in those days, but I only met him uh, in 92, 93, if I um, remember correctly, when was, I was a young uh, fellow at uh, Collegium Budapest, which was a very uh, important uh, new venture uh, of the first uh, Hungarian government, which was a right-wing government uh, run by uh, Josef Antal, the, the, the uh, prime minister. And uh, actually, uh, you know, uh, these occasions at the, the academic research institutes, when a lot of uh, humanists or, or social scientists come together, most of them leftists. And at one occasion, uh, he too appeared, uh, and he was the only guy, you know, who uh, in a surrounding when, when uh, you know, in Hungary there, there was this uh, uh, Christian renewal or whatever they they they, they claimed, uh, and and actually yes, uh, Anton Josef was a Christian Democrat of the first and uh, real uh, uh, rank, but uh, but uh, but uh, of course uh, the humanities and the social scientists uh, were uh, in in the hand of uh, of the of the um, old um, uh, you know, establishment. And, and, and the, the, the invited speakers, too, were, were from, uh, from that side. Liberals, uh, uh, very good quality, but uh, from the left. And him. And that's, that was uh, the first occasion that I met him. And then, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, as, as the years passed, 
we realized that it's not so easy to join the European uh, uh, club uh, and it took uh, uh, how many almost 15 years uh, for Hungary to, to join the European Union and this uh, area and uh, actually after the, 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 the turn of the, the century Roger realized that uh, again he has uh, a certain mission and, and came back uh, to this uh, region and started uh, uh, this sort of uh, uh, meetings with, with, with young people, uh, uh, with uh, uh, the Danube Institute uh, and with, uh, with other institutions. And I think uh, it was very important and, uh, and, and very influential as well. By now we see that, that uh, there is a new generation in, in, in Hungary who are educated on his works. We still need to publish uh, in Hungarian some of the stuff because you know he published almost 50 books, uh, which is uh, quite an outstanding uh, performance. And I think that, that uh, it's a real achievement that there is this uh, place uh, uh, the place, uh, uh, you know, he was a theoretician of uh, architecture and he realized how important in a, a major metropolis it is to have a place where you go home. And this is, uh, I think, the idea behind this uh, venture here. Well, let me put the same question to you that I put to John when I asked about uh, Maggie Thatcher and did she pay attention to the thinking of Roger Scruton. What about uh, today's leaders of, the Hung of, of Hungary? Did they study the, th the thinking and writing of Roger Scruton? Can you think of any? Yes, of course. Uh, you know that uh, most of them uh, went to study for longer or shorter periods to, to, to England, uh, partly through the, the Shorer Scholarship to Oxford. And, uh, and, and Roger was, uh, uh, you know, one of, of, of the, the, the leading lights uh, of, of uh, that generation, I guess, when they were also, uh, you know, uh, uh, closer to the liberal uh, uh, ideology, um, Fides in, in the, um, uh, an earlier phase of, of its career, the, the, the ruling uh, party uh, for 10 years now in, in, in Hungary uh, uh, was uh, earlier uh, belonging to that uh, uh, circle of, of uh, uh, the European uh, concert. But I think that uh, Viktor Orban, uh, the, the, the prime minister of this country, uh, had uh, a real uh, 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 interest in his work. He actually likes uh, intellectuals uh, from both sides, actually, inviting uh, some of them, like Patrick Dinin was uh, invited, uh, uh, I think, a year ago when he visited Hungary. Um, you know, there are these uh, uh, connections by now uh, between the, the, the movement uh, of uh, uh, intellectual conservatism around the world and, and Hungary and our institutions like Danube Institute, uh, the, the Matthias Corvinus College, or the University of Public Service. We try to reach out, bring people uh, here, and, and let uh, uh, the connections uh, uh, thrive. And, and uh, Viktor Orban actually uh, admitted uh, or, or confessed that he likes to read uh, the challenging books from both sides uh, and, and uh, and he gave uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, one of the highest merits uh, to, to decorate uh, uh, Roger at the last phase of his life uh, to express uh, the honor uh, that, that, uh, that he um, took so much uh, attention and, and uh, paid so much attention and took uh, uh, important parts of his life to, to dedicate it uh, to this uh, region. Douglas. Roger Scruton suffered a huge amount of backlash due to his provocative writing, so maybe, maybe the truth itself was a provocation. Um, and that required courage, didn't it? To just keep on, speak your mind, stick to your ideas. And um, do you think that to be a conservative today requires courage? Well, in certain places it obviously does, and at certain times. Um, and uh, in Roger's time, it, re it required some significant courage in what he did in his own country. Uh, it required some physical courage as well as moral courage in what he did here and in other countries behind what was then the Iron Curtain. Um, I was very struck some, some years ago, um, uh, a couple of us got together to try to get a campaign together to try to 
see uh, Roger honoured in his own country because he had already been given a number of honours by uh, other countries but, but not honoured in his own country. Uh, and this campaign ended up successfully uh, uh, um, in the uh, award of a knighthood uh, by the British government uh, uh, given by Her Majesty the Queen uh, five years ago or so now. But I mention this because uh, in, in the process of, of that, uh, um, you have to get letters from distinguished people to, to back up the, the, the application for an honour. And uh, going back to what was just said, um, actually, of course, one of the things that we did was to, to, um, to, to look at the countries which Roger had had an impact in behind what was in the Iron Curtain. And uh, it was so striking that among, it was one of the easiest such campaigns you could have because all the people who, who, who wrote letters were um, just so keen to do so. Uh, they included the now late uh, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, Lord Sachs, who had been a student of Rogers at Cambridge. Uh, they included the distinguished playwright Tom Stoppard. And then uh, from uh, Poland, uh, from Hungary, from Czech Republic, from Slovakia, people who had been students of Rogers who had ended up uh, leading their countries after the fall uh, of, of the, the Iron Wall. And that, that was, it was so striking because it's hard to think of any other thinker or indeed teacher uh, who you could say had had an impact uh, and whose former students had gone not in one place but in multiple places into positions of significance and political uh, um, power. Um, so I think that it, it's very important to, to bear that in mind, that way in which his thought went out, like, like a great river into, in, into the sea of wider political thought and action. Um, it, it's true that he suffered a, a lot of um, slings and arrows. Um, uh, I think that was particularly prominent in the 80s when uh, he had published The Meaning of Conservatism and had, by his own description, made himself a pariah in the academic world. Uh, he then, of course, uh, doubled down on that by writing his superb Times columns that, that John just referred to, but each of which, as uh, one of the eulogists at Roger's funeral said, was a tightly packed pipe bomb uh, designed to explode uh, um, underneath the, the, the lies of his enemies. Um, th this made him much hated, um, but also very well known. And uh, I think that he, I think as the years went on, uh, the, the brickbats diminished in, 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 in number and volume. Right towards the end of his life, they sadly came back slightly again. And I remember him saying to me with some um, disappointment that he said, the old anti-Roger Scruton hate machine seems to have got back in motion. Uh, I said, well, it hasn't really been in full motion for some years, but he definitely felt that the, 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 he felt, he felt um, I think, slightly beleaguered. I think that's true to say, probably throughout his, his life. Um, and I think it's an inevitable condition of the fact that he was willing to tell truths at a time when most of his contemporaries were happy to occupy themselves among lies. Um, I don't think he thought it was surprising particularly. I think he was probably disappointed by it, but not surprised. You know. One element of his thinking revolved around the notion of the, the nation state mm. and that um, you know, it's a sign of, of the conservative mindset to, to, to belong, a mm. sense of belonging. Um, is that relevant in today's politics? It's hugely important. I mean, he, he, he thought, I mean, a lot of people talk about the nation state and have written about the nation state. I think few have thought about it or talked about it with the depth that Roger brought to, to, to the discussion. Um, yes, I mean, he, he, saw, he saw nationhood as, as one of the most important forms of belonging. As he says, the widest way in which you can, you can use a first person plural, the widest way in which you can talk about we. Um, now, now, he thought about this and wrote about this for a long time, and then uh, latterly, I suppose, it became particularly relevant again. And it was a subject which he, he returned to because the Times kept on coming back to this issue. What is the nation state? What is its role? What is the reasonable form of belonging? Where might belonging go wrong? He, he, these were all things he'd thought about and he knew, he knew what the options were and he laid them out and he justified uh, the best forms of belonging and said how people could stop feeling themselves to be wanderers in the world, in a chaotic world, and could find a reconciliation with the world that we, we find ourselves in.
uh, if, if you allow. Uh, I think that one should appreciate uh, this uh, effort uh, in, in the mirror of the fact that, that nationalism, the ideology of nationalism and the ideology of conservatism is not the same track. So in fact, uh, what he did was a very interesting intellectual maneuver as well, you know, coming from Britain, which is not a nation state uh, as such, but also coming from England, which is a nation. <laughs> so in a way, uh, what he did was to, to reintroduce the discussion on the nation in the conservative uh, intellectual context. And I think that, that it was quite relevant. And by now we have got this new movement of, of national conservatism, which must have been partly influenced by, I wonder how you see it, but I think that, that um, one of the major influences behind that movement uh, the spiritual uh, light behind it must have come from his uh, ideas uh, on, on the nation from a uh, very definitely conservative perspective. So can we say that one current of his thought is connected to Brexit, John? He did I say that, that the more jurisprudence expands beyond uh, the nation state, the less accountability there is. That's right, and he was a major figure in this. Um, he lent respectability despite what Douglas has rightly said about the attacks on him in academic life, he had achieved by the turn of the, this century um, a unique position in English and British society uh, that he was a man of undoubted intellectual distinction, uh, accepted as such throughout Europe and in uh, the United States, <laughs> that, he had, um, that he'd also won respect of a different kind for what he'd done during the communist years in, in bringing um, intellectual refreshment and truth um, to the, the Czechs, the Poles, and to other people in what was then, quote, Eastern Europe, unquote. So he had this unique position, and he produced highly sophisticated arguments, which were nonetheless essentially the arguments that ordinary people felt about their nation. They, I mean, you know, most ordinary people couldn't give a lecture on, at least I certainly couldn't, off the cuff on some nationalistic project, but they know what their feelings are and they know that they're reasonable and they know that they love their country and there's nothing shameful about that. He managed to assure them that they were perfectly right in that and that was, that was significant. Um, so I, I, and I, there is another element of, uh, from nationalism, and, and of course Roger did actually speak at the second conference, I think, on national conservatism in London um, about a year before he died. So he was certainly part of that movement, um, an influence on it as well. Um, there's also, if I may just, uh, just go back to something that Douglas said, um, the element of conservatism that he represented as well uh, in his distrust of narrow ideological uh, recipes and formulas um, was also the point of view put forward by Shirley Robin Letwin, a, a cons an American conservative philosopher who lived in London and, and who was a, both a friend and a slight rival of Rogers. They didn't see eye to eye on everything. She wrote The Meaning of Thatcherism. But, um, uh, but uh, her point was that England was a society in which people were, did not, did, were not comfortable in making theoretical arguments for the positions they took. And their favorite form of argument, she would say, and she wrote a great book about Anthony Trollope's novels in the 19th century, is, well, that, that's not how we do things here. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's really not on. And um, the, she and Roger, in different ways, uh, managed to make uh, to provide arguments for the people who themselves couldn't provide those arguments, although the, the mass of people. I think that's a very important role. Douglas, where did Roger Scruton see the place of faith and religion in the conservative mind? Uh, well, gosh, um, Roger and religion is an incredibly complex subject, um, which I think scholars and writers will mull on for some while to come. Um, he obviously saw it as being central. He understood the, the, the extraordinary force, power, and place of religion. Um, I, I think why I say I think the people will, will struggle with it is because, is because whilst Roger wrote extensively and with great depth about religion, he often appeared to be slightly dodging the main question. I think this isn't, to, this isn't by any means to do him down, but to say that 
for instance, in the face of God, one of his latter uh, uh, books about faith, um, uh, he talks a lot about architecture, he talks about music, because he saw all of these as being roads to understand the divine. But he does, he does try not to get onto the subject of actual, uh, um, uh, well, what would you call it? He, he, he tries to dodge the ultimate question. In fact, I, I, he reminds me slightly in this of, of, of the late Irving Crystal, who, who John knew as well, who, who once asked on a panel whether he was a believer, uh, replied nomically, uh, I have faith. Um, and I, I think Roger would have found, if, if cornered like that, a similar way of getting out of it. He, his instinct, I think by his own admission, his instinct was, was atheistic in a way, um, and something therefore that he struggled against, because he understood the, the significance of the divine, and he explored that, and he was open to it. But he was always slightly uncomfortably removed from it, and that's why, in a way, the... The image I always have of him in that is, is, is he, was, he was famously a church organist at his local church in the country. And it was sort of an appropriate place for him to be in the church, um, uh, slightly apart from everything, absolutely integral to it, but wouldn't have wanted to have been quizzed on it. Uh, maybe I'm... No, this is a very interesting point, I think. Um, the, uh, it would be very interesting to know what Elizabeth Anscombe, a, a very um, serious Catholic uh, philosopher who, who was his first supervisor, I think, at Cambridge, thinks on this question. But there's no doubt that Roger was... Uh, sorry, I shouldn't say there's no doubt. There may be doubt, but there's, <laughs> there's, there's a feeling that, Ron, that I share um, with Douglas that his view of religion was one that I've come across also, for example, while I was interviewing Hayek, which I'll quote in a second. I think you've done a lot of work um, with um, the Canadian, um, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, and and his position seems to me ambiguous, too. Um, what Hayek said to me, which I think is a common position, he said, "I cannot myself believe uh, the Christian religion and faith, and I cannot say with certainty there's a God, but I have come to believe," he said, "that it is important." that there be a God, that there should be a God, and that those who tear down religion, with whom I might once have had some sympathy, I'm now very hostile to them, and I believe that they're doing damage to civilization. Now, that's not an exact quote, but, but it was a very interesting, but it's a true quote, and, and um, so I, I, I think that that is a position which was shared by also by Kenneth Minogue, who was probably, I think you've described him as the most important public intellectual of the right in Britain about the time he died. So again, um, th there's a revival of religion, I think, uh, on the right and in society, but it's a revival which a lot of its members are slightly uneasy about where they themselves can finally l end up. I think that Julian uh, Barnes once said, uh, I don't believe in God, but I miss him. Would that so circumscribe it? <laughs> you know, you know uh, yes, uh, you know that uh, for a philosopher to talk about God, because I think that's the word that we are looking for, <laughs> which, is, which is hard to pronounce. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's indeed difficult, uh, you know, for a philosopher, and mainly for a philosopher who actually thinks seriously and wants to speak about the truth you know, and wants to be honest. And these are very important restrictions on you. And, and, and mind you, uh, Roger was uh, Kantian in many respects, and Kant uh, actually, you know, excluded from uh, the, the, the research territory of philosophy uh, the aforementioned. <laughs> and so, therefore, it is, uh, I think, uh, crucial to understand that, that uh, he, he had this, this modesty and, and self-restraint not to talk about something that he was not aware of uh, how to talk about, you know. He was not a priest, he was not a theologian, and he was not a believer in the uh, original sense of the word. On the other hand, I think he was on the way. He was, uh, you know, uh, uh, he was taking the pil pilgrim's po progress. So he was, uh, you know, step by step reaching uh, the destiny uh, uh, which uh, he was part of. And 
perhaps he did not uh, receive grace. I think that's a, that's a very important notion. You cannot buy it. You cannot, uh, you know, argue it out. It's it's uh, either there or not. We cannot know it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, he was, you know, witnessing uh, 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 the, the the truth uh, that you uh, what you can do is to do uh, as uh, your uh, fathers and grandfathers did. Mm -hmm. And of course, he is coming from a, 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 a labor uh, background, a working class background. On the other hand. Uh, I think that what he uh, realized, due partly by, by to, to influences like, like uh, Michael Oksha, to himself, was not a believer in the original sense of the, but he practiced the religion. And he, he, what he tried to do is to go to church and to play the organ and to be part of that community. We talked about the nation as the largest community. But I think religion, to yes, religion is also uh, a, a community that you can belong to, and, and I think that's very important for him that he belong to that. If I can just add something to that, the, 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 I agree. Um, th th there's something very important about this, cause, because all of Roger's thought, like all of his books, they all connect, don't they? I mean, I mean, it, the novels, the memoirs, every, everything connects, and, and the, the, when I mentioned before that, that, that this, as I say, the slight tendency of him to slip into talking about, for instance, aesthetics when approaching issues of the divine wasn't, wasn't um, a complete avoidance of the subject. I mean, you're right, it, it, he was loath to talk about the subject of God itself. But, of course, the reason why he found aesthetics and um, the whole subject of beauty and the arts so important was that he recognized that they were something like a signpost that we have and that therefore they're worth more than just skipping over or regarding it as something akin to a hobby. You know, um, one of the things of Rogers that had mo has had most impact, I think, in a way, is the documentary he did to accompany a short book of his from OUP about 15 or 20 years ago on beauty. And the documentary which accompanied it has a, has a life of its own on, on, on YouTube. And uh, certainly it was my experience quite late on in Rogers' life, I accompanied him to an event with, with Jordan Peterson in Cambridge. And um, on the way there and on the way back, we were stopped by um, a, a couple of times by young uh, student-aged people, I don't know if they were at Cambridge or not, who recognized Roger from that documentary on beauty. And of course, one of the things he says in the documentary as with the book is that, is that this is a subject we should, we should dwell upon because we, we all intuit when we come across it that we've come across something from a divine sphere. Um, and what I think is one of the many things that's remarkable about Roger's thought and his, his, his whole contribution is the fact that he went against a number of prevailing winds of his time. Uh, to have been a philosopher uh, at the time he was was largely, I am not doing any great offence or any greater offence than necessary against philosophers, but was to engage in, among other things, for instance, games about language. It was, it was to go into narrow realms to do with, uh, you know, hermeneutics, for instance. Uh, um, all interesting, but essentially academic games. And Roger recognized that the job of philosophy and of a philosopher was to do much, much more than that. And so whilst everybody else said, well, these are interesting things to occupy yourself in, 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 in our times, he said, well, yes, they may be. But then here are these eternal things and these eternal signposts. And oughtn't we at least to linger over them? Could, could I just pick up what you're saying and ask you a question, which is that um, I know that Roger was a friend of Tom Stoppard. Mm. And I have, to, I have to think when I go to see plays, um, well, like Jumpers, obviously, but, but also I was thinking of plays about the situation in, in um, Eastern Europe under the communists. I'm thinking of Dogs, Hamlet, and Cahoots, Macbeth, for example. I have to imagine that Roger had some influence on Stoppard. Um, I rather wish that I had commissioned, because I did discuss it with him once, uh, his writing, an uh, 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 appreciation of Stoppard. But, um, but there are uh, signs, I think, that Roger did have an influence on the arts in, in, in a way, because if, if, as a critic, of course, but also someone who 
I mean, in a sense, made the artist feel more important mm. than uh, a com popular culture might otherwise do. Yes. And what is more, uh, even more interesting is that he himself uh, practiced the, the arts. I think mm -hmm. that uh, uh, for a philosopher to do so is quite an achievement. And he was, uh, you know, uh, courageous enough to, to, to step over that, that uh, borderline. And, and uh, he started uh, to write novels. Uh, and even to compose music, for which he learned, you know, the, all the necessary um, the theoretical background to it, and uh, and and composed an opera. So you two see, operas. <laughs> two operas. <laughs> you, yeah. uh, but but you know, an, an opera, <laughs> which is something that that uh, even a musician would not <laughs> be very very uh, careful to to do so. And and in that respect, I think uh, it's very important that that you pointed out this this aesthetic dimension, which leads him uh, from uh, from the common sense, from the ordinary experience of every human being to what is beyond uh, our knowledge, which, what is beyond what we can conceptualize, but which, uh, which is uh, something that is relevant for all of us uh, uh, as, as, uh, as human beings. And I think that the late uh, uh, Scruton is very important in the sense that he got uh, uh, the, the courage to address some of these, uh, these very basic issues because he felt that, well, uh, at the end of the life, you have to try to say something uh, serious about uh, these basic notions without, you know, the, 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 the the mist uh, around it and without the, the professional terminology which uh, in a way uh, excludes others to understand it and that's why uh, which, which you mentioned the, the common sense is always there and helps to understand it. If I can just add to that so um, uh, just quickly yes I, mean, I, I it, it's very important this, this uh, the extent to which Roger encouraged artists and particularly musicians. Um, I, I think he has had a huge impact on, on, on a range of prominent and, and not so prominent figures, but um, a large number of composers in our day uh, owe an enormous amount to Roger. And I think there's a reason for that, which is, is not just that he appreciated them and they appreciated the fact that he paid attention to them. Um, but he understood the nature of, what they were, of their art. He understood what they were reaching for. Um, and, uh, and in a way that I, I think it's important, because, if I may say so, also for one other reason, which is that uh, m music in our day is perhaps the last thing you can't um, fake. Um, you can fake being an artist, and Roger was devastating in, in explaining you know, the, the incredible shallowness of, of a significant chunk, not all, but of, of, of modern art. He recognized you could fake being an artist. Uh, you can fake all sorts of other things. You can't fake being a musician. You know, you, you either play or you can't. You either compose or you can't. And, and that recognition of the craft, which he then learned from the inside himself, was, was exceptionally important. Um, but yes, this is, this is a very important aspect of his, of his, of his work, and one which I'm, I'm very sure will be enduring. Um, yeah, if please, we're, now we're praising the impact he had on uh, wider society, uh, I think rightly. And uh, why, uh, how do we explain the appallingly poor impact he had on the Conservative Party of the last 20 years? I mean, he did have some influence on Mrs. Thatcher's party, um, uh, but I thought, think that in the last, uh, well, the first 20 years of this century, uh, the party behaved appallingly towards him. And, and it, indeed, it has not behaved particularly well to its intellectual defenders in, in, um, in the arts, uh, in all of the ways which Roger was, was um, important because he did provide a conservative voice in, in, uh, to, to, to all of these different audiences. So how do we explain the failure of the Conservative Party? And indeed, its betrayal of him uh, when they actually did relent and give him something, but then almost immediately snatched it away. Yeah. Well, the Conservative Party is awful. Um, um, it, it's hard not to come to that conclusion. Uh, it's ungrateful, it's um, uh, mean-spirited in lots of ways, and doesn't, it doesn't cherish its own. Um, and, and many parties of the left do cherish their own rather too much. Um, but yes, John, John is right. The attitude of the Conservative Party towards him was strange. I mean, he was clearly the... the, the, the 
standout figure in conservative thought of his generation, um, and, and yet had this position in the wilderness in a way. Uh, and, but there's one other thing to be said about that, which is nevertheless, uh, he was there when they needed him. Um, and you can feel this among younger uh, um, members of parliament today. I was very struck, struck by it at that uh, National Conservatism Conference in Rome in, in January, that if, if you're a young uh, politician of the right with good instincts, but you're not sure where you'd moor them, they go to Roger uh, uh, posthumously as to an extent they did in his life, because they do know <laughs> They might need these ideas at some point. They might need some foundation to the things they intuit. And, and here is one of the few figures. So, so they, had, they were bad to him, very, very bad to him, in a kind of characteristic style. But he, of course, made his peace with that. And it's very important, just as you say, about the way in which, towards the end of his life, he made um, his peace with religion in a very interesting way and came to this... This important way, he wrote, he wrote a diary for The Spectator, I think it was almost the last thing he wrote. Um, just before he died, he wrote for the Christmas issue of The Spectator last year. A sort of summary of his tumultuous last year. Um, we're finishing on the very moving uh, and, and deep, but almost casually described thing. He said that to come to the end of your life is, 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 is to come to the realization in a way of what life is about. And he said, and life is about gratitude. And that's something that he had been heading towards throughout his life and his thinking. But characteristically, he came to that and expressed it in a simpler, more beautiful and straightforward manner than I think any other thinker would dare to do. Hmm. But coming back to this uh, relationship to the Conservative Party, you, Douglas, certainly know that, that Conservative uh, you know, thinkers are sometimes uncomfortable uh, for, for uh, establishments and, and parties. So that's, that's part of the game uh, that uh, you have to play, that you, know, you have your own point of view, you have your principles, and you confront it with, uh, with uh, the, the party's uh, agenda and, and, and everyday matter. But I think that in the last year of his life, he played a very important public role as well as uh, the, the, the president of that commission, uh, Building Better, Building uh, More Beautiful. And I think that's a very important mission because it's a public issue. It was uh, the issue how to uh, uh, organize uh, the, 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 the uh, legal environment of, of uh, urban development in, in Britain. And I think, and, and there again, there was this moment of ungratefulness. He was kicked out because of that, uh, that very silly accusation of, of, of Roger by, by this uh, 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 journalist. And then he uh, came back and, and finished, I think he finished his job. He, he, he could uh, actually, uh, you know, uh, pan the, the final uh, draft of, of the commission and I think that it's on the right way now and I think that's a very important mission because it shows you that, that uh, a, a political philosopher can also be quite useful for his country as, uh, as a public figure if, if there is a, a, a demand for it and, and he was always ready, to, as, as you mentioned, Douglas, uh, when, when there was a need for that. I was thinking Actually, about the meaning of life. Is it possible that here we have uh, a core of conservative thinking? Uh, what does it mean to be a human being? Uh, this broad cultural ap approach, he even wrote about sexuality. Can we have this? Does, what does that have to do with the conservative mind? So is it, is it uh, to take an interest in what it means to be a human being as opposed to taking an interest uh, in ideals and should we all be equal? Yes, that's the difference, I think, between a liberal agenda and a conservative one. We conservatives always start out from what is the fact, what, uh, what, uh, what is actually the case, and, and not uh, what uh, we would uh, you know, idealize and, and abstract uh, from that. And I think that, uh, that uh, indeed he has got a philosophical anthropology which he uh, published in On Human Nature, a very uh, tiny book, but a very serious one. And I heard that there are some uh, uh, things that he wrote which were not published. So maybe we will find uh, something on, on that topic uh, later. But, but the basic point is, uh, as, as all the learned gentlemen here uh, emphasize, that indeed uh, you start out from the 
ordinary human beings, ordinary experiences as it happened for generations and generations, and not from the ideal constructs of and ideologies, doctrines and dogmas of, of uh, the intellectual. I think that's, that's the basic distinction uh, between these two uh, kinds. Uh, 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 John. Well, no, well, I was just going to say briefly that um, there's an interesting t tension here. I mean, Roger um, would accept that politics is not an intellectual activity in the main, it's a practical activity. Uh, politicians have in front of them problems which they have an obligation to solve. They propose solutions, they get elected, they try to solve them. M Mrs. Thatcher, for example, wasn't really a Thatcherite. Uh, uh, she didn't come in with a kind of a blueprint. She had certain things she had to do, defeat inflation, deal with the overmighty trade unions, um, win the Cold War. Uh, now, that meant that, she, and, and when the uh, uh, unexpectedly the Falklands are invaded, she had to try to find a way of defending the Falklands, which she did. So a you know, politician doesn't come in and say, I'm going to transform society in a way that will make it a wonderful place, a little paradise. He says uh, he has to deal with the problems uh, in front of him. Now, at the same time, is the point raised by Ferenc a moment ago is absolutely key. No professional politician I know would have thought, I know, let's, um, we've got an, we want to really win the election. Let's make beautiful architecture one of the <laughs> causes we're going to promote. And yet, it's one of the causes, in, which in, I think is one of the most powerful public causes at the moment in the world. And uh, I mean, in Britain. And if you were to... In um, Hungary too. Let in me, Hungary let me too. Well, no, 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 absolutely. <laughs> and rightly so in a city like Budapest. So um, since, as we know, politics is downstream from culture, there are these m cultural questions which if you are uh, serious of winning, you have to demonstrate to the public that your heart is in the right place. And that's one of the things that I think Roger did for conservatism in a broader sense. It, he demonstrated our heart was in the right place. And when you've done that, any number of other issues people will listen to you on, I think. Thank you, John. Douglas, a last thought? Yes, I just want to, uh, um, I agree with that. Uh, just one other thing, which is that in a way, uh, one of the things that Roger laid out throughout his life and thinking was, was something exactly counter to what the prevailing wind of the day was on another level, which was this, which was that the left throughout Roger's uh, youth and, 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 and since was always talking about struggle. You must endlessly struggle against the world as you find it. You must, you, must, you must fight against things. You must fight for things. You must go forward and ever forward. And, and, and Roger recognised where that part of the dialectic were, was, was necessary. But he also he, he added something else in that was absolutely central and missing in conservative thought, which was to say, yes, but we also have to find a way to reconcile ourselves with the world that we find ourselves in. And that reconciling ourselves with it, that doesn't mean that you're blind to injustice or, or deaf to, to calls to change things, but, but that we as human beings, if we are to find any kind of peace, have to find reconciliation with the world and not always find ourselves just in the permanent state of revolution. And this is a very important thing. I think it's something that a lot of people, particularly young people, can, can, can now find themselves in agreement with because if a group of people say to you, you must be unhappy and struggling throughout your whole life, and another says, yes, but that can also be tempered with a search for solace with the world you find yourself in, that too is a very appealing call. Well, and we must reconcile ourselves to the sad fact that our time is over. Thank you very much for attending. <laughs>